Ah, uh, thank you, Grace. Isn't it powerful when someone speaks from their heart what God is doing in them and puts it in words to us, that same conviction that's resting upon grace just comes into our hearts and our, in our lives. I hope that you feel drawn closer to the table this morning. Our theme for this Good Friday and Easter and our whole lead up to this time of has been at the table, coming to the table. And my mind went back to about three years ago. We were in the midst of COVID. Everyone had a different idea of what we should do during COVID. Well, the church should do this, the church should do this. And there were varying ideas and opinions. And, and I, I had a dream right in the midst of that. And I dreamed I saw this banqueting room, and there were several tables in the room, but I saw this table right in front, center, and I saw people sitting around the table. And they were talking to one another, and as they talked, I, I, as I watched, I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I, I could see they were getting more and more agitated, and uh, their voices were ri rising. And then I saw one person stand up and started talking to all the table. And then another person at the table stood up and, and was talking back to them. And then suddenly everybody was standing at the table, um, talking and shouting at each other. And then I saw one couple start gathering their things together. And they were going to leave. And right at that moment, the master of the feast, that, that host of the table, came up. In my mind, even in the dream, I knew it was Jesus. And he came up to the table and he said, folks, folks, just sit down. He said, don't leave the table. He said, I have prepared a feast for you. I have good things. I want you to stay. I've taken care of all the differences. All the different views. He said, I know them all, and I've taken care of it. Just, he said, just sit down. Sit down. Don't leave the table. There's more things to the dream, but that was the part that spoke to me three years ago. And, uh, and of course, I knew the application of it because we were living through it. And the thing that impressed me was how the Lord viewed his church. The image that the Lord had of his church that he gave to me were people around a table. I would have thought if he had, had a picture, it would have been something like this. A bunch of us together singing, worshiping, praying, that this would be the picture of the church. But the image that the Lord portrayed to me were people around a table. And the Lord had provided a meal for them to partake of. And I realized there was, well, I knew it was the communion table because I thought to myself, well, of course. That's what the church is. It's people gathered around his table, his broken body, his shed blood. We're, we're, we're only together because we're around that table. And then I also realized the table goes more than just the salvation communion table, but there was actually a banqueting table. And I thought of the verse in Song of Solomon 2 and verse 4. He has brought me to his banqueting place, and his banner over me is love, waving overhead to protect and comfort me. And I began to realize, wow, there's more at this table the Lord wants us to partake of something, to enjoy something together. It was going to bring us eternal life, but there was also at this banquet nourishment for living and for what we were to do and how we were to live, our, our, uh, live in this world. There was a value around the table being together and that God had provided for us something that was there at the table. As I was thinking about this and as we were preparing for this 
uh, time this morning, we prepared this table here that's in front of us. And it's sort of a contemporary dinner table, sort of one that you might have prepared at your home for later on today, Good Friday meal with the family, and there's different seats around the table. And I believe that each seat around this table represents who we are around the Lord's table. Just as a family would sit around the table, we're the family of God and we're sitting around his table. And the first chair I see is where the father sits at the head of the table. And he has prepared a meal he has it all set. He knows exactly what we need. He knows what will nourish us. He knew, knows what will satisfy. It. And he's provided it all at the table. I thought of the words of Jesus when he came. And he told his disciples, your forebearers received manna from heaven. But he said, I'm the bread of life that have come down from heaven. And he said, if you'll eat of me, he said, you will have eternal life. You will never die. This table is a significant table. Because coming to the table and, and partaking what Christ has given us really is the very aspect of our salvation. It's not earning our salvation, but receiving our salvation as we partake of Christ. Big difference of having to prepare a meal for ourselves and just receiving. So the Father has prepared a table. Well, around the table, there's different seats. And we could say this one is the mother. And the mother is someone that when you're around the table, she's thinking about everything. Not just thinking about sitting and relaxing at the table, but she's thinking, oh, I've got that in the oven, and I've got to prepare that on the sideboard yet, and that should come, and, and are the kids all sitting up, and is everybody having the right table manners? And she can be concerned about a lot of things other than the fellowship around the table. Jesus sat at a table literally like that, and the lady's name was Martha. And uh, she had a sister who was sitting at the table and she felt she needed to tell Jesus, tell her to help me. So concerned about others doing what they should do because she was doing what she felt she had to do. She was imposing it upon others. And Jesus said to her, Martha, you're troubled about many things. There's a lot of things in your mind. But he said, Mary, she's chosen the most important part. And that's just to sit and listen to my words and just fellowship around the table. You know, sometimes we sit in this seat, don't we? We're at the table. We're really concerned about the table. We want everything at the table to go right. We're looking at everyone else at the table. Are they doing what they should be doing? Have they prepared themselves like I prepared myself? We start putting things on other people and we get distracted by actually the things of the Lord. We're so involved in the things of the Lord that we miss really the fellowship and the reality of it. But we're doing, doing, doing. And it's almost like the father reaches over and says, you know, just, it's okay, it's okay. Just enjoy the table. Just enjoy the other people at the table. Clear your mind. Then I look at the next table. Perhaps he's the eldest son. He's always tried to do what his father wanted him to do. He's concerned about the enterprise of his father, but he's also concerned about all the natural things of his father. And he's a little judgmental of other people around the table. 
that maybe they're not doing what they should be doing. He's concerned about this and that. There was a person in the Bible that Jesus told the parable about, and he was the elder son who had stayed with his father, always tended the affairs of the father, but the younger son had gone his own way, gone off, and now he's heard because he's out in the field and he comes back and he hears this son that was wayward and been away and wasted his, his time and, and the inheritance that he had. He, now he's, he's at the table and he doesn't want to come in. And actually he feels angry. But the father is so gracious. He gets up from the table and he goes outside in the parable that Jesus gave. And he says to his son, why are you so upset? Don't you realize that your son has come home? Yes, I'm well aware what he's done, but that's what the table's all about. He's come back home. In fact, we've killed the fatted calf. Really, not only is he home, but he's the guest of honor tonight because we're glad he's back at the table. You know, sometimes we sit in this chair and we want to please God so much and we're working so hard to please God and doing what God wants that we become a little judgmental of other people. We look across at the table. We maybe not say anything, but in our mind we're, we're thinking, you know what, they shouldn't be here. I see what they've done. Or if I'm here, at least I should have been the guest of honor for all the things that I have done. You know, I think at times we all sit at different seats around this table. We come to the next chair. Maybe it's a teenage daughter. And she's sitting at the table. But she has a cell phone in her hand. And she's scrolling, 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 scrolling. She's taking messages from her friends. Friends that's not at the table. Friends that she knows out in the world. And they're telling her where they're going to be going next. And they're telling her this text. And watch this video. And watch this meme. And so she's watching and she's scrolling. And she's at the table, but she's really not clued into what's happening at the table. Because so she's so distracted by everything that's happening in her life. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever sat at this chair? And you're thinking about this, and you're thinking about the other, and if you're, uh, you, you maybe you're thinking about business, you're thinking about a transaction, you're thinking about I want to do this, or you're thinking about this sport, or you're watching this, and it's all on the screen, but you're sitting at the table. And there's better stuff at the table. Because the Father says, taste and see, the Lord is good. And I have a plan for your life. And you're pursuing all these things to, to try to satisfy yourself. And don't you know, you're only going to be satisfied when you submit your life to me. And as Grace said, you give up some stuff. It's like the Father comes over and says to his daughter, Hun, why don't you just give me the phone? I got better things in store for you. If you just give me your phone, just taste and see. It's better be here. You're never going to be happier if you just give the phone to me and just relax and fellowship around the table. And I'd like to think she offers that phone. But there's not a condemnation in the sense of you've got to be banished from the table. It's a sense of the Lord just caring more about her and his plans for her life. And she's being distracted and she's wasting time and effort. She's missing out what the real reality is. Then we come to this chair. Maybe this is another son. Son didn't come home that night. He was out carousing getting into things he shouldn't get into. 
He got into affairs. Maybe he's like the younger son of the story I told a little earlier. Got to such a point that in that story he was feeding the pigs and eating the slop that the pigs ate. It deteriorated and deteriorated and deteriorated. He didn't set out that way, but he ended up that way. And somehow, he said, you know what? I'm better off at home. Oh, I know I've, I've, I've messed up. I'll just come home. I'll just be a servant. But when he gets home, the father meets him and embraces him and Puts a ring on his finger and a robe on him and brings him to the table. But maybe he's sitting at the table and everyone else is looking. But he's on camp and he's dirty and there's sort of a smell about him. He's not cleaned up yet. It's almost like the father says to everyone else at the table. It's okay. He made it right with me. And yes, he hasn't cleaned up yet, but he's got a place at the table. He's my son. He's at the table with me. I know we all have felt that at times. We've done things that we feel has disqualified us. That we think God could not forgive me. I've messed up too much. I want you to know the heart of the father. In the story, it said every day he looked to see if his son was coming. And when he saw one day his son was coming, he ran to him. The Lord is waiting for every one of us. There's a place at the table for us. If we would just come to the table. And then that brings us maybe to the last chair that we see here, and this is an empty chair. There's room for someone else. Maybe the father says to the folks at the table, did you invite anyone? Who did you invite to come today? You know there's always room at the table. They need to come and experience what we have around the table. Did you invite anyone? And I think that speaks to us all that this table that we see sitting here is representative of God's table. And what he did on the cross so long ago is he made reconciliation for everyone. He made a way there's enough chairs at the table for everyone in this world who will come to the table. And the invitation is come to the table. You don't have to be worthy. You don't have to clean up enough. Just come to the table. Don't think we fully appreciate the heart of the Father for the world. How much he cares for people. He knows everyone. He sees their potential. He sees what they can be. He's looking past their faults and he's seeing what he's designed for them. And he tells us, just go tell them to come. Invite them to the table. Befriend them, bring them to the table. And so we come today at the conclusion of this time this morning and commemorating what the Lord did so long ago. And then I'm at the table here. You know, since I have, there was an original table that night that Jesus sat around with his disciples. And there was some literal bread that was there. And the Lord literally took the bread in his hand and in the presence of those around the table, he he broke it. And he said, this is my body that's broken for you. And the hand of the Lord went out to a flask and he took the cup. He said, this blood is the new covenant. God made a 
marvelous way for us to come. He just envisions it as a table where you can sit and relax and be accepted and not judged. But you just have to make it right with the Father. And you take of his bread, his broken body. You take of the cup, his shed blood. And so we're going to do it tonight. It's almost like I want to almost take from this literal table of so long ago and walk up through all the centuries to the table we have before us tonight and realize that that bread is still available to us. He still has open arms. There's still a table set. And so long ago, his blood was shed for us, was poured out, and it's still available. He's still replenishing every cup at every table, at every banqueting table, where people are gathered around. It's there for us. It's available for us. And it's available for us today in this place. I wonder if you'd stand with me.